Okay, hey everybody. So we are out here tonight to see the last the Rise of Skywalker. I don't know why I almost said the Last Jedi for some reason. Um, but I guess it's the last of the whole Star Wars thing. So uh, I've avoided all possible reviews, all possible spoilers that I can think of. I don't know if something out there may have said something and I just didn't know. Saw one little meme uh, that I thought was dumb. I mean, and I did see somebody that said, oh, it's fun. And I like that guy, so maybe it'll be fun. I don't know. I really like The Last Jedi. I'm like a, unlike a lot of people that didn't like it very much. So I, I don't know what to think. It's nice J.J. Adam uh, is back doing all his old, you know, review directing stuff. I don't know why I said review too. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm just wanting it to be fun. That's all I want it to be. I want it to be a little more cohesive than like uh, the... Uh, what was that one? Uh, fucking A. Why can't I remember the name at the time? Episode 6. Uh, the uh, whatever episode 6 was. Why is my mind going blank right now? Uh, I can remember The Empire Strikes Back, but I can't remember the fucking name of that one. Um, Return of the Jedi. Jesus Christ. Now I remembered it. It's uh, <laughs> fucking stupid of me. But I just want it to be a little more cohesive than that. Like, that was kind of a jumble mess, too, when you look back on it. Uh, and kind of like Revenge of the Sith, uh, which was, I thought, the best of the prequels, in my opinion. But other people seem to not always agree, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully, lots of fun. Figure out what the others have to say um, before we go see the movie. So we'll see you in a bit. So, yes. what do you think? I'm thinking that I hope it's really good and better than the last one, but J.J. Abrams back to the shooting. And I'm hoping for some epic lightsaber baffles. Uh, I'm probably the only one that liked The Last Jedi. What about you? I'm hoping that this one is a lot better than The Last Jedi as well. <laughs> but it does look like it promises pretty well, hopefully. Hopefully. Crystal? I just hope it's good. All right. Hey, everybody. So, uh, decided that it was just going to be me and not in the car because... One, we brought everybody, and two, it was, it's really late. Uh, that is a long fucking movie. Uh, and lastly, my wife was with us, and um, I didn't want to make her either have to, like, wait somewhere or hide in the back seat or do whatever, because it's not her choice to be on video if uh, I'm the one that does these type of things. So, um, but nonetheless, we want to talk about Rise of Skywalker. So, I'm going to do something a little different than I think I normally do. Um, I'm going to split it into two different parts. Uh, one being a just talk about a part and then one being a spoiler part. I don't know how long I'm going to talk about this. Um, you know, it might be you know, 10 minutes for each, five minutes for each. I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of things that I kind of want to talk about. So I think, and what I'm going to do is a, uh, at the end of the non-spoiler part, I'll give a, a rating and everything like that. Uh, and then at the end of the spoiler part, um, we'll just end it. That makes sense, right? Not like I'm doing this on the fly or anything. So, um, let's just talk about the movie in general. So, um, one, is it, this is a weird question to ask, is it a Star Wars movie? Um, uh, yeah, it's a Star Wars movie, all right. Um, there's a lot of going back to, uh, The Force Awakens, um, it's like that. It's really, like, it has its member berry moments, right? Like, oh, I remember, you know, oh, the Death Star and the, the room where the Emperor fought, I remember, you know, it has a lot of those types of, like, little things. And some of them are really cool callbacks, and some of them are, like, uh, it feels like it's a little, like, pandering, here we go. Uh, and there's a couple things that happen at the beginning of the movie that, like, I'm like, oh, that would be surprising if they did that. Oh, no, they really didn't do that. This is the way it went. And while you're watching the movie, uh, I feel like it's, like, uh, you know, relieving at, at some, like, point. I don't know if relieving is the right word, but it's, like, it's still good enough. I don't know. Like, you, you enjoy it, and especially when, when the things, like, happen that you're just kind of like, cool, okay, I'm totally done with it. And they kind of think back on it, and it's like, eh, I'm not sure. Um, so the pacing of the movie is the biggest problem that I have with it. Um, you know, and I know the way people feel about The Last Jedi. I'm not going to get into that type of crap. But I felt like the pacing, other than breaking and getting the Finn thing, uh, and, and there's two things that I'm going to say that The Last Jedi does do right. 
Uh, one, it makes you, it makes Kylo Ren better. Um, that's one of the things with the whole, you know, between him and Ray talking and really kind of delving to that character. Cause there was at times in the first one where, you know, while I still think the character is kind of neat, um, you know, the whole degradation of himself. So there's a lot of like, you can tell the start of the redemption arc for him, if he's going to have one or if he could ever possibly have one. And so does that conclude in here? You know, that's something that you've got to think about. Um, then you, you know, the the pacing I felt like outside of everything else was, was really good. You really didn't quite, you know, I, even though it jumped from place to place, it kind of stayed in place to place, right? Everything had its own spot. So you had Poe in his own thing. You had Finn doing his own stuff, whether you agree with it or not, like it or not. And you had Rey kind of doing her own stuff. And eventually they all came together at the end of the movie. With this, it's like, it's like vignette to vignette. It's like we introduce something new and then we go to the next part. And then we introduce something new and then we go to the next part. And there's a lot of little things that they try to tie up, I think, within the entire series, it seems like that. And I don't know if they're always successful in doing all the tie-up stuff. Um, it's something that I really wish it had a little more time to do. It's really weird to say that. Like a, uh, you know, <laughs> like over two and a half hour movie, you was like, oh, I wish it had more time to do stuff. But I really wish that some of the things... And what they could have done, they could have cut some stuff and they could have, uh, you know, added to other parts of the movie. I think that. Um, I think that overall, um, this really makes me appreciate Finn a lot more. Um, I think that uh, he really came into his own. And there was something that was supposed to be said that never got said. Uh, it kind of sucks. It happens right at the beginning of the movie. Um, and we'll talk about that one in the spoilers. Um, I, I still really like Poe as a character. Uh, but I don't know if his arc is, is truly there. Like, yeah, kind of. Um, I thought he was one of the more interesting characters in The Last Jedi and even in The Force Awakens. Um, and it's not as true here, but I definitely think that, like I said, I think that Finn really has become one of the more interesting characters of the franchise. Um, and, uh, you know, and then everything else, it's a great use of, cgi and practical effects and there's some really cool like monster tech and there's some really cool looking action scenes and everything like that and and those things in terms of that pacing sorry about the noise it's the cat uh but the, in terms of those types of scenes and that like going on it's it's perfectly fine it's very very entertaining um and there's something that i have to talk about in like the spoilers um uh, that i wish i had seen like that's probably where the spoiler stuff is going to be like i wish i had seen this and i wish that they had done these things and and overall you know do i still feel that you know what the basic review is um so what else can i say without uh really ruining any other part of the movie um score is great really like the score uh and uh so the story itself is like I said, it, it tries to wrap everything up, but does it ultimately do that? I, I think at times yes, at other times no. Um, I like the whole thing with the Emperor. Uh, but the biggest thing that I got to say before I go into like kind of critiquing with spoilers and everything like that is that was it fun? And you know what? It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's actually quite a bit of fun. The humor is very good in it. But it really feels like, uh, and I heard somebody else kind of say this, uh, and another thing I was listening to, where it's kind of like Marvel humor. Maybe that's what people were like upset with some of the things in the Ryan Johnson version, which was that the humor was a little more more over the top than it needed to be. Where this one, yeah, there's a lot of humor, but it's really kind of subtle humor that you have everything going on there. So it's overall, you know, it's a it's an interesting film. It's a fun film. Um, and I don't know why, well, I kind of, maybe I know why critics kind of slammed it a little bit. Um, but audiences that are upset about it, I don't know why. Honestly, like if you look at every one of the third, you know, parts of the, each trilogy, um, this reminds me a lot of Return of the Jedi. It really, really does. It has a lot of the same problems. It has a lot of the same pacing issues. There's like a lot of things that need to go into this that, 
to, to get you to your ending. And that's what always work. <sighs> God damn. I guess I'll have to cut that one out. But like I said, um, it doesn't always really work. It, it sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. Um, but you, you have a lot that you're trying to, to just jam into here and making it so that you have an end to your story and you have an ending to, you know, the whole Skywalker saga. So, uh, giving this a rating, um, I'm going to give it a, uh, a three and a half out of five repair droid guys. Um, it, it's good. Uh, it's, it's a definitely a solid B. I would give it, if I had to give it like a, you know, somebody asked me, what's your cinema score for this? It'd be from A to F. It would be a B. It may be a B plus. Like I said, it's really entertaining. Coming out of it, I really, really enjoyed it. But um, there are a lot of things that uh, I'd like to talk about and kind of go with. So uh, it's been a lot of them become story-wise. So. so at this point, what uh, I'm going to say, and we'll, we'll flash it right there for just a moment, uh, is that this is now going to be spoilers. So... If you don't want to know anything about the movie, you're kind of wondering what's going on, um, this would be the part where I would say, you know, watch out. It's going to be spoilerific. Uh, and you can just stop the video here and go to the end and check out or check out the description down below for all of the social links and everything like that. Um, beyond that... Um, here we go. <laughs> We're getting ready and going directly into spoiler territory. So, uh, overall movie story, I don't know. Like getting from place to place, fine and everything. But so nothing was really ruined for me. Now something was ruined for my wife um, because of another YouTube video out there where they put, "Oh, what does the kiss mean?" Um, oh, what, what you know? It's one of those things. Why you got to put that as the title of your fucking video? days after when people haven't even seen the fucking movie. So first of all, fuck you channel for doing that shit. You should just not put that up there. You should just maybe put it in the description or something. You don't put it as the fucking title of a video and fucking ruin everything for everybody. I would never do that on here. Put like, Ooh, here's goes, you know, it's, it's fucking stupid. Okay. Just fucking stop it. It sucks. A lot of people don't want to be fucking spoiled. Um, and there are people like me that like to talk spoilers, but uh, I want to try to give everybody as much, you know, information as possible or, uh, you know, knowledge that we're going to spoil things. Um, so uh, Ray's lineage, okay? They wrote them, so they felt, I think a lot of people felt that they wrote themselves into a hole with The Last Jedi with Kylo Ren saying, your family was nothing, you know? And so they're like, fuck, how do we do this? How do we, how do we take that? And what do we do? And... You know, oh, yeah, they were nothing. Uh, they were, they made themselves nothing. Uh, because, you know, you're the daughter of Palpatine. Wow. In the, in the way that it was delivered, it wasn't delivered. It wasn't, like, super shocking. It was just kind of like, oh, there goes the camera. Um, it was just like, she has this. And that's it. What the hell? What? It couldn't have been more dramatic. I felt like it could have been more dramatic than that. Uh, I felt that uh, at least the point of the thing, but then I know Kylo is also at the same time, like the whole reason that he's out there trying to find Palpatine is ultimately he wants to kill him and he doesn't want Palpatine to be anywhere a part of his new society. He wants to take away all the power and have everything to himself and be the emperor for the galaxy. And Palpatine is just like, yep, that's what I want too. I want you to have it. Oh, fuck me. So it's just like that whole setup is really shit. And, and the whole thing of it calling Rise of Skywalker, ugh, you find out at the very fucking end of the movie why it's even like called that because she decides she doesn't want to keep the Palpatine name. I get it. I totally understand. I wouldn't want the fucking Emperor's name either if all this shit was going down and the Emperor symbolizes everything that's fucking evil about the galaxy. Uh, and the Sith and everything like that, and you're a true Jedi, and blah, 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 blah. And now you're going to call yourself Skywalker, and that's it. I get it. I get that that's what you want to do. But I still think it's fucking stupid. Like, if she's really going... I, I wish that at the end of the film that she had died. 
you know, I wish that the idea was not that Ben is going to fucking die because after he saves her life and he gives back the life force that she gave him because she saved his life while they were fighting on top of the old Death Star, which is a really fucking cool scene. Um, and he basically gives it back so that she can live and then he dies and he becomes a force ghost. Uh, I, I don't like I wish that she had been the one to die and then came back as a force ghost. And then he realized that he was in the wrong. and He's going to make up for everything and he's going to be Ben Skywalker and then everything's going to go on. But I know that's not what the story is and that's not where everything's been going. And that the story is truly about Rey and her ascension to be a Jedi despite her lineage. Because despite the blood that she has flowing through her body being a Palpatine. Um... And even though he's like, oh, well, you're always going to be evil because all Palpatines are fucking evil, but her parents were fucking good. And they hid her from him for such a long time. So I guess all Siths eventually have kids or something like that. And uh, she never did. You know, Leia, she never really finished her Jedi training either. So when I guess when she had been, it was way after they had even trained to be fucking Jedis. Because they do show that, and that was kind of cool that they show the two of them. And they do the face de-aging thing, and it's kind of a little bit awkward at that point. Um, but honestly, like I said, everything is just kind of like a vignette to go, oh, okay, Kylo Ren is searching the galaxy to try to find the Sith homeworld. Um, let's show just a little bit of that. Let's show some fucking badass fucking things that he did. Uh, let's show the Knights of Ren and we're only going to show them for a little bit and then they're going to pop up towards the end and they're going to be completely useless. Um, let's go ahead and show, you know, um, him meeting Palpatine and like agreeing to help him and it's just going to go from little, little scenes and everything. It's just like, it's all little fucking scenes. And a, a lot of them, they're, they, they do have a decent type of pacing. <sighs> Fuck me. Why is this... Like, why am I yawning so fucking bad? <sighs> but it, it still is just... It feels like you're just jumping. Like, we're jumping from planet to planet. And from little action to little action. Uh, you spend the most time on whatever the desert planet is. I can't fucking remember the names of planets. I can't even remember the name of the fucking Sith planet. But it's Sith planet. Um, and that is the finding, like trying them, them getting this, this dagger so that C-3PO can, you know, or, or C-3PO translates it, but then you find out he can't fucking speak Sith because Sith is banned. Um, so they can figure out where the little tracking device to the Sith homeworld is. Okay. Like it's like that little setup is like, I just feel like it's terrible. Like they could have done more to get to that point. Like the whole thing is, you know, for the bag, of, the Palpatine's basically done everything. And he's like, I created Snoke. And then you see a bunch of Snokes in all these little like jars and everything. I do feel that the last Jedi, like this makes the last Jedi, um, a little worse than maybe in terms of like the story, just because they are trying to fix some of the things that Ryan Johnson, kind of put them into a hole or he had an idea and people didn't like the direction that he was going for um and i kind of liked what he did in a lot of spaces but because it was going in this direction now all of a sudden it's like jj abrams and them they have to go back in and write these new things and write themselves out of what direction ryan johnson was trying to put them and where they were trying to go and so the ultimate thing like did jj abrams ultimately have the whole thing being that Palpatine is going to be involved in the series? Was there something more that he wanted to do? I don't know. Um, he, I know that he didn't necessarily want to direct this one and he didn't want any involvement. He was trying to pass it off to different directors and each one has their own and he was stuck kind of fucking doing this one. So uh, I, I understand there was probably some type of layout and it was like the middle one, you kind of get to do what you want because it's a middle film. But this is the way it ends, this is the way it begins and this is the way we're going. So I just... I feel like if we had known a little more about Palpatine in either of the two movies, then like it was always hinted, but like even the movie, it starts off saying that there's the message that's going out there to everybody from Palpatine. And it's like, okay, so there's a message going out. It would have been cool to actually like see that type of thing to like get a little more information in that, you know, 
actually see people hear it for the first time be like, what the fuck? I understand Carrie Fisher's dead, but it would have been cool to get like a reaction from Leia once she heard it for the very first time. Uh, it would have been really, really fun, really, really neat. But it's still, it's not, uh, it's, it's not exactly what I expected from it. You don't get anything. It's just, here's the intro, here's Kylo Ren, and we're moving along. Um, the, the end, too, when Rey finally fights back against Palpatine, and she starts hearing the voices from all the different Jedi. It was fucking cool. I really enjoyed that. You could hear Liam Neeson. You heard Ewan McGregor. You heard Yoda. Uh, you heard, uh, well, I should, I should say, Obi-Wan and Mace Windu and Qui-Gon Jinn. I was, like, fucking stoked when you heard Qui-Gon Jinn's voice. Um, I, because I really liked that character from the first one. Um, he was probably my favorite character throughout the whole fucking movie uh, for everything that was going on. Uh, and... It just was like, that's cool. But what I really wanted to see, these are all the people that learned how to do the Force Ghost powers. Learned how to transcend and become a, a, something that lives constantly, even though their bodies are dead. They're constantly there in the flow of the Force. Um, when she's fighting back, because he's like, I am all the Sith. And you see every fucking Sith inside like the whole big fucking arena. And it's really fucking cool. But the fight between them is kind of lame. Like, it's, he's just basically, like, force lightning. And she's, like, blocking with the lightsaber. And she, he's like, I am all of the Sith. And then, of course, she goes, I am all of the Jedi. And then she puts them together. You know, she gets a big X. And then goes through and starts repelling back the lightning. Like, as she's doing it, as he's trying to push more, she's pushing more back. It would have been cool. And, and I know this is, like, a Dragon Ball Z ripoff. And we talked about it. Pat and I talked about it for a second. And I do like this idea, though. Um, you know, like Gohan, when he was having to repel back Cell and Cell was going to kill everybody, um, we had to make sure, you know, you saw Goku like pop in as like his spirit self and come in and like help give him power and give him the strength. And it would have been cool to e either see like they're putting themselves into it, like they're flowing into her and then pushing more towards him. Or they all like kind of are back there and you see them at least all line up just for a second. You see every single force ghost and then boom, there's the, you know, the final fight that you have going on. It would have been like so much more interesting or cooler than what actually happened. That was one of the things that I feel like even at the end, they go back to the fucking planet. You know, and Leia has died, so they have to say that she's died. But she doesn't really get a ceremonious, like, type of ending either. Like, it's it's other than, you know, she's, oh, I'm going to reach out to Ben with my Force powers to stop him uh, from killing Rey. Because he's so much more powerful than she is. You know, she's still not up to snuff. But yet, in The Force Awakens, she was pow more powerful or on par with fucking Kylo Ren. But Kylo Ren, over the course of all of these movies, has become even more powerful. Don't know why, don't know how, but he can fucking kick Ray's ass. So she just dies because she's going to use all her power to reach out to Ben. Okay, like I just don't feel like that's... Uh, maybe maybe this is why people don't like certain things, but I feel like that's not good enough for the character. Um, but I understand why you got to do it. And I wish there would have been more. I wish that, you know, like I said, that the powers were all there and they're all there to help and... It's just, I don't know. I feel like it's lacking a little bit, at least in that regard. In in Leia's death and in the final battle, um, the battle between Kylo Ren though, each time that they fought, the Kylo Ren and Rey, fucking great. I love that. It's so much fun. Uh, them shooting at the the different ships out there, great. Uh, man, it, it sucks that the uh, I, mean, I always forget General. It starts with an H. Uh, we'll just call him General H. I don't know why I can't remember his name. Probably because it's fucking late. It's like uh, almost 11 o'clock. Um, he goes out like a fucking bitch. And it sucks. Like They find out in the beginning that there's a spy. And the spy is leaking them information. And then it turns out to be him. I don't want to say it's like General Hurd or something like that. And so he helps them escape from the ships to go and, and meet up. And then he tells them, oh, shoot me in the leg. And then they shoot him in the leg. Well, he says, shoot me in the arm, and then Finn shoots him in the leg instead. And, like, 
that like sequence when he just goes back and he's like, oh yeah, they're doing this stuff, and then he just gets shot, sucks because that character has kind of been like like bitched around he was i thought he was really good in the force awakens in the last jedi he has that that kind of silly scene in the beginning where they're doing like the Obama type jokes or i can't hear you jokes can you hear me now can you hear me now with poe uh but ultimately he still was a pretty decent character and in this i just felt like he went out the way of fucking phasma man I fucking love phasma like i don't know why i just liked that whole idea of this like great stormtrooper general and then she looks at different from everybody because she's silver and everybody else is white. Um, and she acts like a badass at the same time. Uh, I don't know why. The other thing that's really weird, and this is something that's on the side, it seemed like every single regular stormtrooper talked like, like had a female voice. That was kind of striking to me. I don't know why. Maybe because in, in like every other Star Wars movies, the stormtrooper voice has primarily been male. But like in this, it felt like they were all female, and so it was a bunch of women getting shot up. Equal opportunity, I guess? I don't know <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. But it's still like, just both of them, both Phasma and that general, they just go out terribly. Uh, I don't know why they need to go out that badly. Like, let them do something badass. The guy like that's supposedly been helping uh, Palpatine all this fucking time that I don't recognize him from any other fucking Star Wars movie, but this fucking Star Wars movie, um, he goes out in kind of a badass way. Uh, well, badass as in you seeing how he goes out, not necessarily for him. You know, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, but like I said, I think that, like, some people saying, oh, well, it's, you know, I think went up to leading it. They were saying, oh, it's more of, like, C-3PO's story. He's very, you know, inclusive to the plot than it is everything. Because it sounded like, you know, that Han got his own story, Luke got his own story, and this was supposed to be Leia's, but with the death of Carrie Fisher, we don't truly get Leia's story. So they kind of transferred some of that stuff over to C-3PO. And some of that stuff is good. And there's a joke that goes in there that you know, that, because he's going to get his memory wiped, that the R2 unit, oh, their systems are never very good at backing up memory, and then, of course, R2 has all the memories and everything in him, um, and that's why you see his eyes go red, because he's speaking Sith, or he's translating Sith, and Sith is totally fucking illegal to for anybody to talk to from the Senate, so it it's just, like, I, I feel like some of the stuff, and I really like the stuff with C-3PO, I think C-3PO fucking shines, but ultimately, Finn is the one that I think fucking shines in this movie. If if the first movie was more of like Ray's movie and the second movie I feel like was Poe's growth, I really feel like the third one's Finn's growth. But the problem is is that he's about to tell Ray something. He says, I got something to tell you because he thinks that they're going to die and then they survive and he's like, oh, I'll tell you later. Never fucking tells her. So I have a feeling that this is something that leads into the whole thing that like he's in love with her because it kind of seems like that's kind of the way that everything was going to go. Uh, but she was really into Ben, you know, I guess. Um, the whole thing with the kiss and then he becomes a forest ghost. That was weird. Um, and then, you know, but he's still supposedly into Rose. And they totally, it sucks. It really sucks that they have to write that character out of the fucking film. Because she wasn't that bad. You know, she was, it was showing that, you know, especially, it was Finn's character growth is what that character was. And that whole sequence. It's just character growth for Finn. And I think ultimately what Finn becomes in this movie is because what Ryan Johnson did to him in The Last Jedi. Yes, is that sequence a little long? Yes, it's a little bit too much. But it's a lot of character growth that I felt like was necessary for him. Especially after the first film, because he's just kind of a scared little boy and then gets knocked into a coma and then all of a sudden he comes out of the coma in the second film. You know, it's just weird. Whereas here, he really, you know, he realized that, and, and I know the whole thing, oh, I'm going to save you because of love. You know, like, you do it all for a peck in the cheek. But honestly, it was because, you know, she... He, they realize that he's got a lot more to, like, fight for. Yeah, she loves him and doesn't want him just fucking sacrificing himself for a stupid reason. Just like Poe learned that, you know, sometimes that you, you can't just, you know, focus in. You, you have to either pull back or you have to make small sacrifices for big sacrifices or there's always going to be a plan. You just have to trust yourself and trust the people around you. And that's maybe why Poe doesn't really get a whole lot in this film, though you do learn a little more about his past and what he used to do. Um, it, it, so it's really like, 
he doesn't have any more growth other than he's now, you know, he's going to be general once Leia dies. And he's got to learn, and he was going to pull out, but he still had the same mentality of, we just got to keep pressing on, just keep pressing on, pressing on, no matter what, because we're going to get help. And and that was part of the believe in others type thing. Like he believed that everybody else would still be able out there to help him. So it's it's both a good and a bad, I guess. But like I said, with Finn, you know, he really seems like he did a lot more. He's more sure of himself. He's more strong-willed. He knows what he has to do. He knows when it's time to, like, the, the sacrifice is going to be worth it and everything, and it's great. But that whole thing, he wants to tell Ray something, and then you never find out what it fucking is and the whole thing, especially since they're never going to do anything with these characters ever again. Why leave that up there? Why even say anything like that and then never fucking talk about it for the rest of the movie? It was supposed to be something big. I honestly think it's going to be I love you and I want to be with you type of thing. If that's what it is, fine. Let it fucking be that. But it doesn't necessarily need to just go in there and then just be said and then never said fucking again. And then Ray. I mean, she has the growth of becoming a Jedi Master at the end of it. You know, I guess there's that. But there's no real room for her to do anything different. Because she's still, like, fighting with her demons. She still is, you know, torn between the light and the dark side. Uh, there is a whole section where, you know, Kylo is trying to turn her over to the dark side and makes her think that she blows up Chewie, but she doesn't. Like, and he makes that choice, too. Because he could have really just done that that was that fucking chip and fucking killed Chewie. I thought that would have been, that was very shocking. I'm like, wow, they really killed Chewie? And then he wasn't fucking dead. The the one that hurt the most, though, like, <laughs> hurt the most. Not in that, like, oh, it hurt because, oh, my God, this movie means so much to me and it hurt that they did this change. No, I'm talking about the one part that I actually got kind of emotional at is when Chewie comes back and learns that Leia's dead. Because you see him as a character. He breaks down because officially none of the people that he's been around, these the adventures and everything on, they're all gone now. No more Luke, no more Leia, no more Han. All three of them are dead. And then he actually gets Han's medal that he got from Leia uh, when they you know, blew up the Death Star the first time. And I thought that was fucking cool. Like those two scenes were excellent, excellently done. And I really felt like the weight that Chewie had uh, from Leia dying in those scenes. So there's probably plenty more that I could talk about that maybe I'd rant about, but I don't want to get into like the real nitty gritty. And I've also been talking for a really long time on the spoiler section versus the first part. So I feel like it couldn't, does it change my thought? Yeah. These are the problems that I have with the film. Um, but like I said, I still think that it's fun. I still think that it's entertaining. Uh, if I'm just going to throw myself and not try to be like, is this like, I want this to be the best Star Wars movie that there ever could possibly be. And, oh my God, I can't believe... I'm not that type of person. So I can understand if somebody is that and they think that it's been ruined. Uh, it, you're, you're fucking... It's fucking stupid to think that way. Like, just go in, enjoy, have fun. Was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. Does it have problems? Yeah, it has problems. Uh, but I don't think the problems for me personally deter from how enjoyable the movie actually is so i would still leave it at that three and a half out of five you know little rep repair droid or droid hacking monster guys i'm not going to really change anything out of it um i think that uh there's a lot of people that you know probably feel like this may have ruined what they believe star wars to be and i just don't think that's the case so um uh, as always, don't forget to check out the podcast, especially after this has been released. Um, there's going to be a special holiday episode that drops on Christmas Day, and there's going to be some information on there uh, that's going to talk about some changes that are coming to the regular podcast. The other thing is, is that we will be running a, um, you know, a, a contest in a little bit uh, for some swag from the podcast, um, and uh, it's going to involve a secret word. So, there will be a secret word that will be used in a couple episodes uh, that you'll have to find and figure out what the word is um, and leave it as part of a review. I think that's what I'm going with. And it may change. Who knows? But listen to the Anna and Apocalypse episode that's going to come out this coming Saturday. Um, a couple days after the bonus episode for the uh, holiday episode, 
where Dave and I talk about a holiday special. Uh, but yeah, so you'll get more information during the Anna and the Apocalypse episode that will be released about the contest. I want to let it run for a couple episodes just so that way people do check it out and uh, we can get a little more activity and I can get everybody a nice little gift, um, maybe for a couple of different listeners. So uh, I will talk to you guys later and I have no idea what the next movie will be that we'll see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little... Uh, well, this long review, I guess, long spoiler, short mini review of uh, The Rise of Skywalker. So we'll see you next time.